feel, see things in a different way, see a different way to do things, even in spite of, you know, disease problems, whatever it is. Um, when you, like, as you mentioned, when you see one person can go through it and find strength, then I think that gives the others the strength too, which, um, is amazing. Yeah. And, and it's, a, it's amazing to me how, when you become willing to, um, let go of fear and negativity yeah. in your thinking, you know, just catch yourself and make the, make the, uh, make the, the commitment to do that, that, that things seem, you start to shift your energy to a higher realm. I mean, you could call it a spiritual realm or just a higher realm, but you're in a different space and you see yeah. life differently. Who would you say your book would appeal to and why? I think my, my book would appeal to um, new, new age, not, not a new thought. I like to think of it as new thought rather than new age. I think it would appeal to, you know, people like Oprah Winfrey and the group, her group and um, Wayne Dyer and that, that kind of contemporary uh, writing because they all teach about positivity. And right. uh, traditional Christianity teaches about, um, you know, begging and pleading God to heal right. you rather than doing your part. So I, I think it would be more contemporary readers yes. that would be interested in that. Yes. And that what you're saying about the begging and pleading that's, temp, you know, usually taught is in what your story shows. I mean, to me from talking to you and learning about it is taking your own power back, right. Taking your yeah. power back and making the decision that, um, I, this is how it's going to be for me. I, I choose this way. It's really easy to choose the other way. It's easy to choose fear, but I'm going to choose something different and live my life accordingly. Right. And the, and I had to shift my, my belief in God that was outside of me yeah. Uh, yeah. to a God presence that was in me and that expressed in me as healing love. Yes. But, but I had to so, to totally shift that because my mother really believed that unless I begged God to save Leslie, he was going, he was going to take her from me mm-hmm. because I wasn't looking at things from her perspective. So right. he was punishing me by taking my child. Oh. And I had to appease him and beg him not to do that. So shifting that consciousness from that, because that was the religion I was in. I mean, right. Yes. Yeah, I was I can relate. Sad. Yes, yeah. I can relate completely. Yes. So shifting that to the to having somebody say, you know, I have a practitioner that can help you. And the first thing she said to me was, she said, Julie, you have to change your perspective of God. Yeah. God is not a big an old man up in the sky looking down at you. God is the presence in you. Right. And it's the presence of love and love heals. So if you can get in touch with that presence, then you can you can get that presence to get your daughter to get in touch with it. And right. that's the, that's really the only hope you have. Otherwise, she's going to die at eight because they told me she would die at age seven. And so did you t- work with that practitioner at, when she was diagnosed? It- no, I met her. I, I had two horrible years of being very depressive and, and angry and bitter because I really believed that God was taking my child to punish me. So yeah. I, I, I had two very bad years and uh, I was taking French in graduate school and I met a, a man in graduate school who said, you know, I think my mother can help you. And his mother was a practitioner and she did an incredible job of changing my thinking wow that's amazing i like to call it cognitive restructuring yeah that's what she did with me total cognitive restructuring yeah and and see where that took you your willingness to do that and the ripple effect that that had i love stories like that that's just amazing it's it's so amazing before we close out today is there anything we haven't talked about today that you want to make sure the readers know about your book i i want the readers to know that it took two years it didn't happen overnight it yeah. took two years for me to shift my thinking to a higher level and to, yeah. to bring my vibration up to the point where healing and was possible. So not to get discouraged, it doesn't happen overnight. It's just not something that just it's something you have to work on and you have to totally be committed to. But it really does make a difference in your life. It certainly made a difference in mine. Yeah, definitely from, from talking with you. And I think also it's a daily choice to make that decision, right? It's a getting up every day and making the choice. I'm going to believe this way, or I'm going to look at this, this way. And I choose love over fear. It's a daily choice. And you really have to be awake to do that. 
You know, you have to be attentive, paying attention to what you're saying and what you're doing so that what you're saying and what you're doing is positive rather than negative. Yeah, I agree. Dr. Julie, thank you for for joining us today. Thank you for sharing your story about Leslie and um, coming on today and telling us about her. And also, I think offering, um, you know, everything we've talked about today with uh, self-empowerment, love being, you know, reminding the listeners that um, we can choose love over fear and your story, Leslie's story and and the examples that you provided are such an an amazing testament to living a life that way when, when you make that choice. So thank you for joining us today. You're welcome. And the book will be in audio next month. Okay. Amazing. You can find out more about the book, Women Who Take Your Breath Away, The Leslie Patron Story on Amazon, and I'll link to the book in the show notes, so be sure to check that out. You've been listening to the Books on Air podcast brought to you on webtalkradio.net. You can also hear this podcast on Spotify, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, and Apple Podcasts. I'm Sloan Fremont, and I hope you'll join us for the next Books on Air podcast. Remember, you never know who's going to be here, and you never know what we're going to talk about. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you.